First things first, what is Aerochrome? Discontinued. It was made by Kodak. They got rid of it in 2009. It was invented in World War II. If you want to learn more about it, there's a lot of really great tutorials about it. But what you really need to know is that it's basically infrared ectochrome. Infrared positive film. Kind of unpredictable in the original format, and it's about a hundred bucks a roll now. So how are we going to simulate this? It's not going to cost you very much, if anything at all. Pick an image that you think would probably be suitable for some bizarre color shifting. People, maybe not so much. There's a lot of red in the lips and eyes, and it's going to turn kind of green colored. But a landscape photo like this one, probably a pretty good place to start. So first step, after we've got a suitable image loaded up in Photoshop here, is to apply a lookup table to change the color and the curve of the image. This isn't required, but I think that it's really important to begin with an image that looks as much like Ektachrome as we can probably get right now. Uh, this is a lookup table that I created based off of some film scans that I took about 20 years ago. Feel free to use your favorite. Feel free to use this one. You can get it on my website. Or if you don't have a lot yet, that's okay. You can skip this step for the moment. Once you have the lookup table loaded, clip that to the layer beneath it. That's going to prevent those changes from accidentally being applied to anything else except for the base layer. Once you've done that, duplicate the background layer, drag that above the lookup table, invert that, and then, once you've done that, change the blending mode to color. The next step here is going to be to apply a channel mixer to swap the red and blue channels. Open up the channel mixer. On the red channel, change red to 0% and blue to 100%. Then switch over to the blue channel and change the red to 100% and the blue to 0%. There you go. Red and blue swapped. The next step here is to bring an HSL adjustment there, and I find counterintuitively that reducing the saturation ever so slightly tends to actually make the aerochrome simulations pop a little bit more, especially with the deep blue skies. Finally, and this is a step that I do on most of my images that I process, not, not required, optional, but I duplicate the background layer one more time, drag it all the way to the top, run a high pass filter on here with a very, very small pixel radius. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, somewhere around there. Change the blending mode to soft light. You can reduce the opacity on this layer if you'd like to. It will default to 100%, but use that to play around with sort of the micro contrast on the image. That's it. That's an aerochrome simulation for you. Few easy steps. Does it look exactly like aerochrome? No, probably not, but it's a pretty good place to start, and it doesn't cost you 100 bucks a roll to try this one out.